Hello friends, today I want to talk to you guys about how serotonin is affected by some common drugs, namely alcohol, cocaine, and amphetamines. To begin, I've jotted some notes down to make sure that I uh, remember what I wanted to tell you guys. So to begin with alcohol, first of all, chronic alcoholics have a reduction in the serotonergic nuclei that produce serotonin in the RAF, uh, they're called the RAF nuclei. Specifically, if you remember from the first episode, there's two groups of those. There's a rostral group and a caudal group. The rostral group projects to the forebrain, and the caudal group projects the axons backwards, which means backwards this way. So the caudal group loses neurons in, al in chronic alcoholics, which means they experience neuronal death from alcohol, which uh, certainly is a well-known thing. Alcoholics have a... a uh, a particular and uh, visible in fMRIs brain damage from a uh, long term alcohol use alcohol is uh, creates a lot of uh, it does a lot of damage to the body not just to the liver but also to the brain but let me tell you some more about this so forty five minutes after somebody ingests alcohol, their serotonin levels in their blood their serum serotonin ah, serotonin from serum anyway their serum serotonin levels decrease and they remain decreased until the next day. And by the next day, if someone's been drinking quite a bit, their serotonin levels in their blood will decrease almost to the point that they resemble the serotonin levels found among depressed people. So this may explain quite a bit about, not the hangover, but the emotional hangover after using uh, alcohol. And by the way, this is the same for amphetamines. If you've ever used MDMA or something like that, which when people use that, they actually overdose on amphetamines. So they, they expend a lot of serotonin. We'll talk about that in a bit. But that feeling of, of not feeling quite right the next day, that is your serotonin being very low. So another thing I wanted to mention to you guys is that mice that lack the uh, 5-HT1B receptor uh, gene, which, which is, means knockout mice, uh, drink about twice as much as normal mice. And so it's hypothesized that the 5-HT1B receptor, which is a very interesting receptor, by the way, may play a role in modulating ethanol intake or alcohol intake by... By the way, I don't know if you've known this, but alcohol is an Arabic word. And it's actually a word still used not just to refer to alcohol, to refer to the essence of something. But anyway, uh, it's uh, so it, it's thought that the 5-HT1B receptor mo modulates uh, ethanol consumption via probably not just serotonin, but also GABA and dopamine and its mod modulation of those other neurotransmitter systems. Uh, also, I mentioned this before, but I thought I'd mention this in this clip just to make sure that everyone knows. Ethanol allosterically modulates the 5-HT3 receptors. So alcohol mo directly modulates that receptor, that class of receptor, well, that receptor. So next I want to talk to you guys about cocaine. So cocaine causes the transmission of serotonin, but it also very importantly uh, inhibits the reuptake of serotonin, just like SSRIs do by binding to the CERT transporter. So it increases extracellular ter serotonin, which means cell serotonin that's out, out of the cell, in between cells in the brain. And it decreases, consequently, the activity of the RAF nuclei that originally produced serotonin, because there's more serotonin in the brain because of the transmission. Now, um, it is actually more potent at increasing serotonin in the, in the uh, prefrontal cortex than dextroamphetamine is. And this brings us to our next subject, which is amphetamines. Amphetamines also bind to and inhibit the action of CERT, like SSRIs. But they are, uh, well, co cocaine is too, but they are, they've been studied more for this subject. They are neurotoxic to the axons that, remember, the axons are like tentacles in the brain. They come from the RAF nuclei spreading serotonin across the brain. So the Amphetamines at high doses are neurotoxic to those serotonergic axons. And in fact, you know what protects those axons? Actually, it's, um, there's a blood pressure medication that's been shown to protect not the axons, but serotonergic neurons from death, which is called rilmenidine. I thought to mention this here for those that may be very curious about optimizing their hedonistic activity. So that uh, blood pressure medication, you'll, you'll see why when you open the Wikipedia page protects uh, some of the serotonergic nuclei from uh, cell death in response to an overdose of amphetamines, basically. But 
even brain derived neurotrophic factor which is the growth tra factor that actually affects the plasticity of the serotonergic axons does not protect them from cell death in response to amphetamine overdose which is why by the way I'm extremely against amphetamine overdoses which was, is essentially what, when people say they're using molly or they're using MDMA or they're going to a party they're going to take some amphetamines those people are overdosing on that drug which is the reason why they feel this kind of incredible euphoria where, specifically with MDMA, by the way, with MDMA, when people say, I'm sure you guys have heard your friends, at least if you're younger, uh, because MDMA was not so popular when, with uh, older generations, but uh, you, I'm sure you've heard your friends say like they took MDMA and the world just seemed perfect and they realized that they love touching someone, just touching their skin and they enjoy talking to someone so much and... Some of that is the dopamine, but a lot of that feeling of just contentment and peace and tranquility is a really strong transmission of serotonin that's very sudden and that is causing the axon death of the serotonergic axons and neuronal death of the serotonergic neurons. And, you know, while I think some people think that this kind of behavior can improve their ability to... You know, basically what it does is, you know, you see the world. So this is a bit off topic, but this may be helpful for younger people or less experienced people with phar with pharmacology. You see the world through, imagine a pair of glasses and these glasses are your, your these glasses are your brain, right? So your brain, your glasses may have smudges on them and so on, and that distorts your vision. When you take uh, this drug that transmits serotonin so heavily or dopamine, Dopamine actually usually doesn't have a pleasant result by itself, but say serotonin. The result, you could say, some people will say, and they say this about DMT, and they say this about other drugs as well, that it's like removing the smudges off your glasses and seeing the world either in a different way or clearly for the first time. And while that may be true, I'm not arguing against that, it, it is a fleeting experience that tends not to teach us something long-term, but it tends to give us a sense of wisdom that is fleeting and that disappears soon after. So I'm not against somebody trying it uh, in, in order to educate themselves, especially if they've never done something like that before, because the first couple of times it's a little bit useful, but doing it routinely, like for example, I live in California and there's a uh, famous, uh, what are they called those damn people? I forgot their name again. Anyway, I used to encounter a lot of these people before in my f social groups. Uh, they're, oh, they're called burners. There's a Burning Man thing in Nevada, in Reno, Nevada, where these people go there every year. They do a lot of drugs. Those people tend to do drugs all year, by the way. But they do a lot of drugs. I was friends with some of the producers or administrators of that society. Basically, what they, they, when you do that routinely, like every year, you're, you're just causing brain damage. You're not really learning much over time. And... Anyway, I could get more into this philosophically and, and stuff like that. But the point, what I'm trying to say is that's the damage that you're incurring. That same feeling of being so at peace and confident and comfortable and all of that. That is an overstimulation of serotonin. Something that nobody on antidepressants, so-called antidepressants, would, nobody on SSRIs experiences. That is, a, that is really, um, you know, an overdose. Let's put it that way. And, it, and by the way, MDMA and amphetamine are, and dextroamphetamine, I mean, all the kinds of amphetamine that we're talking about here. By the way, dextroamphetamine, which I mentioned a little while ago, is just the, uh, it's not the eutomer, but it is at least, let's say, the dextral rotation of the amphetamine molecule. The amphetamine molecule has two symmetric uh, rotations. One is called dextroamphetamine, one is called levoamphetamine. They both have slightly different effects and slightly different pharmacokinetics. Anyway, all of these drugs are a little bit similar. So when you see somebody taking Adderall, which is about 75% dextroamphetamine and 25% levoamphetamine at 15 milligrams a day, which is a standard dose, and then compare that, it's almost comparable milligram per milligram to what somebody would take with MDMA. MDMA is slightly more potent, in, in, but also slightly different. So people are taking way more than 15 milligrams, and that's why they're experiencing that huge effect. So, in my opinion, it's an overdose. It's just not killing someone, but it, it is killing your neurons. So, anyway, uh, back to the point. So, I wanted to tell you guys that, yeah, BDNF cannot protect the axons. 
Um, and ex-MDMA users have reduced CERT activity in their brain, similar to what you would find among ex-SSRI users in the short term. Uh, this may not be lasting though. Now, one other thing I wanted to tell you guys about, which is quite interesting. So there's a drug uh, you probably never heard of before called uh, parachloroamphetamine. In the literature, it's called PCA. You'll come across it often if you start to learn about dopaminergic neurons and if you start to study how amphetamine affects the brain. PCA basically acts similarly to MDMA and other amphetamines, but it's much more potent. So at a low dose, it causes serotonergic transmission. At a higher dose, it becomes a neurotoxin killing serotonergic neurons because of overstimulation. Now, PCA's effects can be, in, I mean, the, 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 so, it, the, the, what it does originally is it causes transmission of serotonin. Right after that, it causes, uh, basically, because it causes the neuronal death, it inhibits serotonergic activity. So, because it's basically it's very powerful, it's almost like a neurotoxin. So, what's interesting is, so selective norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors do not prevent this decline in serotonin from PCA, but SSRIs do. It appears that SSRIs are protective from the neurotoxic effects of an overstimulation of the serotonergic activity. So that's all I wanted to talk about in this, what was meant to be short video, but then I started talking about philosophy a little bit. But the, the important thing is, in the last video we talked about addiction. Here I wanted to show you that Serotonin is intimately involved, and, and it is with the other drugs also, I just didn't bother to, to uh, list them here. But serotonin is intimately involved with uh, the, although it's not the driving force, but it is intimately involved with the effects we feel from drugs. And uh, although it is complicated, um, anyway, the, the important thing is that it is intimately involved in those effects, and those drugs actually have a particular pharmacologic activity at the CERT transporter, CERT being the, the target of SSRIs, which are very selective for CERT. I mean, some of them, we'll talk about it more later, but they're very selective for CERT. Cocaine also affects CERT, so do amphetamines. And so do probably other drugs, but none that I can think of right now. It's mainly the stimulant drugs. But the point is, when you take an SSRI, you're taking a portion of that, but you're not causing the transmission of serotonin, which amphetamines do and cocaine does as well. You're just blocking that CERT element or inhibiting its activity. Anyway, I hope this was helpful for you guys. We're going to go on to more topics in the uh, subject of serotonin next. See you next time.